So the terms of trade derived in this model can be decomposed into two factors. The first factor is the relative cost of effective labor. And the other factor is the relative cut of productivity of exporting firms. And actually, this is the main channel. The latter factor is the main channel that can account for the dynamics of the terms of trade. There are two important effects. The first effect is the income effect, which depreciates the terms of trade. And the other effect is the markup effect, which appreciates the terms of trade. And the relative importance of these two effects differ across different asset market structures. So I simulate the model under three cases of asset market structures. Financial autarky, incomplete asset market, and complete asset market. And under financial autarky, income effect is higher than the markup effect. Because if there is an aggregate productivity shock, it increases the income in the home economy, and that induces an increase in the demand for the goods varieties. However, if you allow for trade in bonds, either under incomplete asset market or complete asset market, the income effect is mitigated because there is an international risk sharing between two countries. In these cases, markup effect comes into play. So if there is an aggregate productivity shock, the production cost in the home economy decreases. In this case, it is easier for the firms to enter the home market. So the competition in the home market increases and the markup in the home market decreases. So the expected profit in the home market decreases. So in these cases, only more productive foreign firms can export to the home market. And this changes the relative cut of productivity of exporting firms. So the relative cut of productivity of foreign exporting firms goes up. And through this channel, the terms of trade appreciates in response to an aggregate productivity shock. And this is in line with the empirical findings. So in my paper, there are two important contributions. The first contribution is that I explain the dynamics of the terms of trade through the channel of relative cutoff productivity of exporting firms. And the second important contribution is that I explain the relationship between the financial openness and the, uh, the dynamics of the terms of trade through the tunnel of relative cut of productivity.